Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson six, and lesson seven, the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. Remember, we are combining lessons six and seven. We are doing all activities for lesson six, and we are skipping activity two for lesson seven. So let's continue our learning. So we just read why scientists argue. Now you will be synthesizing to help answer the question about how scientists convince others their claims are correct. So you are going to turn to page 47 of your ecosystem restoration workbook or page five of your chapter two, lesson six dash seven activity packet. You are going to complete the first three boxes after reading, why do scientists argue? The first box is the pages about scientists today. Those were the white pages that were on the right. The second box is the pages about Rachel, Rachel Carson. Those are the green pages. They were on the left. And the third box is your experience making arguments as an ecologist. Once you get your ideas from the first three boxes down, you are going to connect the ideas and record your new understanding about how scientists convince others that their claims are correct. This should be something that is new, not something that you already thought. The key concept that we have learned about over the last couple lessons and activities is that scientists convince others that their claims are correct by using data and ideas as evidence. So now what I want you to do is pause the video and complete the page that says synthesizing ideas about why scientists argue. The data and ideas that scientists use as evidence to support their claims come from observations. Without these observations, scientists would have opinions, but not evidence. Observations are very important for gathering evidence to find answers to scientific questions. Scientists like Rachel Carson test their ideas over and over again, gathering evidence to support their claims. When there is enough evidence supporting a particular idea, the scientific community can come to an agreement that the idea is true. These agreed upon ideas are called scientific theories. It's only through scientific argument that scientific theories can arise. When we read Why Do Scientists Argue, we learned that scientists convince others that their claims are correct by using data and scientific ideas as evidence. You will make a claim about why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving. You'll try to convince others that one claim is best by using data and scientific ideas as evidence. So remember the image on the left? is from our project area. Rachel Carson reviewed data that was collected by other scientists in order to support her claim about pesticides. We've received some data from Natural Resources Rescue that may be useful evidence to consider as we think about why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving. So let's take a closer look at our data. This is a project report number two update and seven days of weather data. So we can see we have our project area and our healthy rainforest. We have a number of sunny days, total rainfall and carbon dioxide in the air. So if we look, our number of sunny days in our project area was five. Our total rainfall was 40 millimeters or 1.6 inches. And our carbon dioxide level is normal. In our healthy rainforest, our number of sunny days was six. Our total rainfall was 76 millimeters or three inches, and the carbon dioxide in the air was normal. Remember, this is just for seven days of weather data. So now, after looking at this data, I want you to answer question six. What does the updated project report show? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson six seven activity packet, in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head.
Go ahead and answer question six. That concludes this video. Our next video will be about writing an argument.